Hey, good morning. How's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it to the uh, end of the week, uh, the week here. Got the weekend upon us. About 10.01 uh, a.m. here, California time. August 9th, 2024. Latest activity here on the globe. Shows a 1.5 earthquake there into the California area. So let's go see what's going on here real quick. I still got a little bit of aftershock activity occurring in the uh, Bakersfield area where we got about 48 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Uh, let's get a total tally on that since that 5.2 struck a couple days ago. About 463 earthquakes. Now, I've noticed uh, a considerable drop in the earthquake activity following the uh, events there yesterday in Japan where we've seen you know a pretty decent earthquake there 7.1 earthquake striking out here yesterday early yesterday morning just after midnight my time and a handful of other quakes in there as well around the region so uh, i've said it once and i'll say it again a lot of times when stress really builds up out here across the eastern portion of the pacific plate and things are quiet back over here well this will continue to amplify in terms of the potential for larger quake activity unless we see some larger movement back over here across the western Pacific or adjacent plate like we've seen here across the uh, the northwestern edge here of the Filipino plate. So that 7.1 yesterday seems to have relieved a little bit of strain out here because we did see a uh, you know major decrease in the earthquake activity around this area we're still seeing some but it's not like it was before um, in terms of the multitude of quakes <coughs> excuse me so again a total tally here of the earthquakes 463 earthquakes here uh, following that 5.2 let's see what we got so far couple twos out there this morning a couple ones as well um, but like I said it's things are slowing down a little bit here but still keep your you know don't let your guard down out there in California still could see some uh, some further activity out here but you know as I've noticed there that 7.1 seems to have relieved a little bit of strain out here for now same for extreme Southern California out here not a whole lot going on just a couple small microquakes one 2.6 out here uh, near the Banning area on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. Here's the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault here. That 2.6 strike at about six miles below the surface, about seven o'clock this morning, so a couple hours ago. All right, further up into Northern California here, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, one earthquake here east of Orland. Fairly deep though, 21 miles underneath this area. Uh, could have something to do with the extreme southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone that extends underneath and subducts underneath this landmass right here, the North American plate. Uh, let's check out the trimmer map last night. Didn't get a chance to do a late night update, but uh, let's see. Yeah, we only had about 44 epicenters of trimmer. So a little relief out here uh, following that earthquake there in Japan. Just a small amount, 44 epicenters into the uh, towards the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. A couple smaller quakes up here as well. 2.1 Amboy area of Washington. Nothing big, not a whole lot going on uh, up there for now. The rest of the states out here, uh, Oklahoma getting littered with earthquakes out here in the uh, oil fields various oil fields it looks like same for texas new madrid seismic zone here pretty quiet and uh, one earthquake out here around the appalachia mountains for a 2.1 yellowstone national park really nothing showing up here for now but uh, let me double check this thing here real quick here's the uh, overview in terms of uh, the seismograph stations there located throughout the park. One earthquake out there. I do see it. Uh, it's going to be this one right here. Now, 
that did show up across various seismograph stations out here and I'm not uh, let me see here I guess it's gonna be this quake right here 3.1 which is south of the area but it did show up locally uh, to many of the uh, many of the seismograph stations out here but that 3.1 again away from Yellowstone more towards the uh, uh, the Wyoming mountain range out here where there's numerous fault systems, but uh, that's about it. One little 3.1 uh, earlier this morning. Okay, let's look at the world view here. Let's see what we got. Got a little bit of activity stirred up here across Indonesia. 5.0 coming in right now. Uh, I want to look at Hawaii, see what we got going on out here. Nothing really um, in terms of earthquake activity. It's a little on. Let's see for the volcano hazards map here. We'll see if we got any new updates going on for Kilauea Volcano. And um, <laughs> this is, they, they did something different out here recently. I have to get rid of numerous instruments out here because I'm not interested in seeing that right now. Um, So the volcano, let's see here, did they downgrade this here? Well, that's Mauna Kea. I was going to say, there's no way they would downgrade that. Just the yellow triangle here is hiding underneath this area uh, for the Kilauea volcano. I make it difficult here now to find everything. Uh, yellow and advisory is the... Um, current situation there at uh well, i see what they did they actually just okay we'll get to that a little bit later but uh, let's check out some seismograph stations here see what we got things have actually calmed down quite nicely out here if you guys can see here um will it work if i open it into a new tab blocked i wonder yeah, that may be a setting I'm having issues with here on my, uh, maybe the web browser. I'll have to look into that. Because I've been wondering why these haven't been opening up here for me. But uh, seismograph stations there in general look pretty quiet. There's not a whole lot going on here for now. Past 12 hours show one little earthquake. I'll fix that a little bit later. Um, the tilt meter out here it's going to do the same thing to me. So let's look at the uh, overall deformation data which shows uh, some leveling off here in the last couple days. Not a whole lot of uh, things have changed yet. Not a, not a whole lot of uh, changes going on there. Obviously, we're still pressurized across the area in terms of inflation, but it's just a waiting game uh, in terms of earthquake activity. Camera, even the camera view is not going to let me see that. That's so weird. Yeah, blocked, blocked. So it's got to be one of my settings up here that must have readjusted itself back to a default uh, to prevent that from popping up. I don't know why, but I've been having some weird issues here lately. All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, earthquake activity up north here into Alaska. Some very small, minimal earthquake activity. A couple twos, even a three coming in right now. Uh, but overall, uh, very typical out there across the subduction zone. Now, the Japan area obviously uh, is showing a major increase in earthquake activity regionally. Uh, let's go back. Well, can't go back the last two days, but the last seven days shows that larger activity out here. Uh, just on the western side of this trench zone that they're worried about. Uh, they're concerned that maybe a mega quake, act, a mega quake event is in the near future. Uh, due to this activity that we've seen yesterday with the 7.1. So continue to keep an eye on this major subduction zone that's capable of producing an upper 8 at least. And uh, even underneath Tokyo area, um, got some movement coming in this morning. A 5-pointer and then also another 4.8 adding further strain and stress across this area. So uh, these movement, these quakes here that we've seen, 
over the last couple of days and even today put the subduction zone right there in the middle so keep an eye on this area in general where we're seeing an elevated uh, earthquake event take place uh, some smaller quakes out here across the Kermadec Trench fives appear to be the number although the latest one though shows a 5.9 earthquake uh, so keep an eye on that, this little sequence of events there across a subduction zone. Uh, about 20, oh, 20 miles into the subduction zone, 19 miles for the latest one. Uh, that could amplify up into some stronger quakes, so have to watch that area. Uh, New Zealand, a couple threes down here on the globe. Uh, but overall... Um, Looks like we're getting a mixed bag of deeper activity up north here and surface adjustment taking place further south here along the plate boundary. These are actually pretty shallow quakes. Uh, these here, not so much deeper. Uh, coming in three, six, 368 miles deep into the subduction zone of the Tonga Trench. So a couple different areas we've got to watch here coming up. Obviously this area where we're seeing some swarming and up here across the Japan area as we're seeing elevated activity take place there as well. All right, uh, see what else we got here. South America air area fairly quiet in terms of earthquake activity for now. A couple smaller quakes, same for the middle America trench with some uh, fours and threes. A couple earthquakes out here in the divergent boundaries that should amplify conditions here across the Middle America Trench and potentially here across the northern edge of the Peru-Chile Trench. Oh, got a little earthquake way up north here. 2.7. I didn't see that show up here on the USGS map, but it looks like it is here on the globe. A little small quake out there. Uh, let's see. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Mediterranean area is quite active today it looks like some fours out there around, around the Turkey area and um, mainly across this plate boundary there in the red line getting a swarm of activity out there nothing big for now but uh, it is quite active uh, across this area that's showing up on the map there on the earthquake 3d globe 4.8 around Greece Mediterranean Sea area and I uh, got one earthquake out in the Iran region from last night at 4.2. All right, a quick glance here at the Iceland earthquake activity. Let me see what we got for this area here. Not uh, not seeing too much earthquake activity. Got a little bit of swarming here across the Grindavik area uh, and the Savart Singhi area in general. Got to watch this area because we are looking at amplified inflation there in terms of the next volcanic eruption in this area and who knows where it's going to go it could be in the same area around the crater area it could be further south in the Grindavik uh, we're quite elevated underneath the entire area uh, latest update here from the Icelandic Met Office which was put out today states that the micro seismic activity continues to increase now the chances of a magma flow and even in, in a new a new eruption are occurring uh, or is increasing there uh, the wording's kind of catching me off here so about 300 earthquakes since monday august 5th all small tremors below the m2 uh, m2.0 magnitude so keep an eye on it and as you can see here's one of their maps uh, bring this up here a little bit this is from the fifth as they mentioned and uh, there's our intensing act intensifying earthquake activity here across the craters area uh, the Blue Lagoon and the power plant is over here. Uh, Grindavik down here. There's still obviously some concern that we could see some fissure activity open up further south of where we've been seeing our most recent eruptions here over the past uh, few months here, which have been nor uh, mainly north here, Grindavik, northeast in this area. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll continue to watch it. Increasing seismic activity obviously uh, means that we're getting closer there to seeing the eruption across the area. All right, folks, um, auroras tonight. Look at that G2 class storm across the board. Uh, we could be seeing uh, auroras out here over the next couple nights. Here's the forecast here for tonight and tomorrow. So we'll, we'll definitely want to get out and uh, see if we can see some of this aurora activity from the northern tier states. I don't think it's going to go down further south, but you never know. 
depending on the conditions there of the current BZ component. But uh, yeah, over the next couple nights here, we got a decent chance of seeing the auroras after dark. And uh, when this comes in, I'll cover this a little bit later in terms of how strong this is. But right now, there's not a whole lot going on for the auroras, as you can see, pretty quiet. Uh, flaring department, somewhat elevated, got a 25% chance for X flare. Coming in, as you can see on the red there, 75 for uh, M flare, C flare at 99% chance. And uh, we do have numerous sunspots, including this massive area, th uh, 3780. Uh, showing some complexity here and uh, uh, numerous sunspots out here that uh, pose some risk here for some flares in the coming days as uh, they are currently all facing the earth right now. So heads up in that department, we could see some further CMEs earth directed. Here's our latest CME, Earth Directed, there from that X flare from uh, yesterday, right? Pretty decent X flare. It shot off a CME. This is the coronal mass ejection that's headed this, this uh, way towards the Earth here in a couple days. But that will add to the uh, forecast up here in terms of the auroras. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good day. I uh, just wanted to keep this a little short. Keep an eye on those regions that I mentioned there. Um, and we'll see what happens throughout the day today. A little earthquake on Hot Capes, Hawaii. Uh, the Bakersfield station is... Right here. Cal State. How did I miss that? <laughs> center, center screen here. Hello. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Stay safe. Some things are not working today, even my hotkeys. All right, have a good one.